This is Paul Brown here from VMworld 2018 US. And I'm at the Gigabyte booth, obviously from the giant sign, but wow, that's a lot of motherboards and a lot of gear that Gigabyte brought here. And Andy Chen. Andy, uh, what's your role at Gigabyte? Hi, I'm the, I'm the FAE at Gigabyte. I'm located in an LA office. I provide all technical support and any information you might need. So people that look at my stuff and my channel tend to be about more nerdy articles and more nerdy videos about the hardware specs and all that. It's great that you have a vast array of your product line right here with the lid off to show me. So if you can give me kind of a short version of what's unique about each product and then we'll get to the particular motherboard of interest to me in the back. Okay. That sounds great. So right here we have our 2U4 node. You can see from the back mostly it has density for computing. We have 24 DIMM slots, 6, 12 for each CPU, and each node has two rear low profile half height, half height, half length PCI 16. We got one more in the front and OCP under the SATA drive slots. Quick question for you. How is it the copper is managing to stay so low? Because, well, you need room for this PCIe card, I see. Yes. So the copper is not as tall a, uh, tall a heat sink as you might be used to, so I guess your RPM and your fan must be uh, spinning right along. Really high. The really, really RPM high, yeah. fan will be really high. So we do have a specially designed heat sink that is meant for this kind of scenario. And the um, network is currently 10G base T. And the chipset in there, do you happen to know off the top of your head? Uh, Intel? It should be Intel X55. Okay, great. And then uh, what do you got in the next server over here? Over here is our currently most popular server, our eight GPU server. In this dual socket platform, we can provide eight GPUs in a single server. That's P100, Tesla. You can even put your GTX, even though it's not recommended. So that's up to 24 drives. And we also have space for tw two more by 16 cards, either InfiniBand, Fiber, or your network cards, or whatever else you have in mind. I'm going to focus on storage for a moment. So in the back, tell me about the uh, chips we're looking at right there on the motherboard. So right there on the motherboard, it should be a 10G base T also with management. And let's see, this should be the Open management the port. Yes. Okay, so we have your standard VGA, your management, your LED lights, and these are your base T, 10G, and your USBs. Okay, also X540 or is it X557 for the Intel DNA? X550, uh, 550. 550, yep, sorry about that. Here we have a canister, four canister for one system, so that's a total of where you put all of your graphic cards in general processors. Okay, and by the way, uh, vMotion with the uh, vGPU. So when you have a high-end graphics card now with VMware ESXi 6.7, uh, you can do vMotion now. So just point that out. That was uh, announcement yesterday with update one coming soon. All right, let's uh, look at the next machine. Maybe we should go around front again. Okay. So what's uh, different about that? Well, it's obviously taller with a whole lot of drives. And uh, what else? So as you can see from the earlier picture, there was 12 drives in the back, and there's 24 right here. This system is for our storage, direct compute. So we have the CPU built on to the board that can access the drives directly through a HBA card or a RAID card. And we have two more rear access 2.5 HDD for your OS. Okay, so typically someone's putting a RAID 1 mirror there for their OS. All right, tell me more about uh, what are people typically installing ESXi on for the servers that are intended for virtualization? So what most people do is probably for storage, file serving, for keeping data files, archiving, and all that. So as far as the ESXi hypervisor, um, do you have any with uh, M.2s for them to install on, or micro SD or SD? Or are they typically going right with the 2.5 inch bay you showed me right over here? So generally, people would go for a 2.5, but we do have onboard SATA dome, even though it's uh, slightly older generation. This model hasn't had the NVMe, but we do have NVMe cards that can accept M.2s. So we can do two or four NVMe's on a PCI by 16 in their back. 
Okay, so you have a card, so you have a PCIe card, so most of your BIOS is probably supported at that point. If you add that card in, you're fine. You can install VMware there. Great, okay. And a uh, quick look at the next machine. So this is our AMD 2 node, like earlier, but this is rear access. This is more focused on storage. It, this is, although this is AMD, we do have an Intel variation as well. It's similar. So here we have four nodes. Each one has two CPUs and eight DIMMs. So a total of 16 DIMMs. From the back, you can see we have a by 8 and a by 16 PCI lane with two M.2 slots for your onboard storage. So you can just create your OS on there. I see both are 22.110 length if you want. Yes. And then the studs are at 22.80 by default. That's cool. Uh, the PCIe card, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Do you guys sell by 18 and by 6 M.2 riser cards or just PCIe adapters? We do uh, by 8 and by 16. Over here is a by 16 standard PCI, so you can put whatever you want. Uh, storage, fiber, we can, you could put a storage card connected from the front six drives per node into the storage. And down here is our OCP slot. So there you could put another, you can either put an HBA card or a network card. So I, where's the OCP? Right here. The, yeah. Do you see the, yeah. So I believe even Mellanox is coming out with a 100 gig infinity band type one OCP card that will fit right there. So that leaves you plenty of room for expansion. Okay, and then you have another AMD Epic here, and another AMD Epic, okay. And then down to 1U. Um, you're just showing representative samples. Of course, you have both Epic and Xeon for 1Us. And we're about to check out some of the uh, 1Us in the back. So let's go focus on the uh, Xeon D, which is of most interest to a lot of my uh, readers and viewers. And that's back here, right? And that's Xeon D2100 I can recognize from the uh, height of the heatsink. Yes. So it's a newer model. Do you happen to know how many months or so this model has been out? Uh, I do not have that information right now. We can always look it up, but we have been selling to certain customers for this model. All right, thank you. And uh, I'm looking at the LAN ports. It says one gig is called the uh, Intel i210. And I'm guessing the 10 gig is probably the X557. And there's the uh, SFP modules, so four of them. Uh, we've got management over there, and you've got a uh, LCD panel on this guy. Yes. Tell me more about the LCD panel functionality. So what it normally just does is scrolls through the options, power, availability, temperature, and everything. So your standard protocols. Okay, cool. And I'm just looking at the uh, copper or SATA connections here, going to the back. You got two 2.5 inch drive bay there. Now that's for, um, let's see, not U.2 height, or could you actually jam a couple of two U.2? Probably not in that driving closure, right? I think well, a little too tall. You can, but we don't have the form factor connection for the U.2 in that area right there. We do have an M.2 location right here with an M.2 probably for your uh, 3G or perhaps Zigbee as well. Okay, yeah, I see. Um, here, can, you, can you hold that for a second? Uh, I see. Full length, 2280 anyway. Not quite 22110, but 2280. And then we have a shorter M.2 there. Yes. And then finally, we've got the slot you refer to. Yes. Um, and here is a, you mentioned a kind of a filler card. It doesn't actually have circuits on there, but what do you normally have in there? Well, you could put anything from an Intel chip to an external LSI, or sorry, storage card. <laughs> okay, great. And then even smaller motherboard is when we go all the way down to Atom which sometimes are called Pentium, but that one's called Atom. And then you're showing off a bit of networking on the right here. Just a quick look at these other motherboards. Uh, what's special about these motherboards lined up in the back? So these are just generally your entry level server boards. We have mostly our workstation. The W and the X stands for the workstation and compliance. The usually low cost, uh, offering Co better cost per performance, while you can all configure your own chassis, your own power supply, your own hard drive bay. So more customization available. And I see um, a lot of the products showed VMware ready on the front there. This one happens to throw the Intel Optane logo. So what do you mean when you throw the logo on there? You're basically saying, sure, you can put in an M.2 Optane drive? Yes, that's exactly this. So we do verify 
we have qualifications, we have QVL, we do validations for Intel Optane. And I believe we are trying, we are in process of doing it on all our M.2 capable boards as well. Okay, um, can you talk just a little bit about the uh, Redfish API and uh, baseboard management controller? And this one I see is on standoffs. It's kind of hovering over the board. So we're talking about right here. The yes. So this right here is a optional management card. So what's most, what's very popular right now is uh, Redfish, Redfish and RESTful uh, protocols for management, as opposed to the old Intel, uh, as to the opposed to the old BMC management protocols. Uh, there's a lot more security and more configura configuration that can be configured uh, from the user side. So a lot more P customer has been asking on it. Okay, great. Well, Andy, I can't thank you enough for your time. I really appreciate that extensive tour of pretty much everything you have. And again, that's the Gigabyte server line, right? So it's really two words. That means the Gigabyte server line. You also have consumer uh, motherboards. But I noticed it's a whole separate website, and that's uh, b2b.gigabyte.com. So thank you again, Andy. Appreciate it.